We have them, yeah. Whoa! Oops. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Mojo Johnson. You know, there's times where you think that things are going, but they ain't going, and I thought it wasn't on. And here we are. We're all together again for the millionth time. That's right. Mojo Johnson here to give you once again great moments in music. Part two. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I thought part one turned out okay. So I got part two here for you. Now instead of four songs, I'm going to show you six. That's right. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's right. You know, four is a tough number to keep track of because it keeps running away. He's kind of a villain, number four. That's right. But anyway, we're going to start things off with a little Leonard Skinner. Uh, track one off of Pronounced Leonard Skinner, which is the first album of Leonard Skinner's career called Pronounced Leonard Skinner. I tend to be redundant and apologize, but hey, this is the way it's going to be because Mojo's a little out of his head. So the first track off of there is I Ain't The One. It's a fantastic opening track. It's got a lot of fire. It's got a great guitar solo. By the way, this one's going to be chock full of guitar solos tonight. We're going to be in Guitar Solo City for a little while. But we're going to drive out into the country of vocals in a little bit. But hey, the last bit of that guitar solo, and I ain't the one, is just, is just, mm, and I won't play that for you. I want you to listen to that, just that, that fire, because it's delicious. Are you ready? That's what I'm talking about. That's a moment in music that cannot be replicated any better than it was when it was that. I don't even know if they could achieve that greatness live. I hope they could. But, you know, I never got the chance. I never got the chance to see Leonard live. Uh, disappointment, true. But, hey, what are you going to do? I mean, I could only be so many places at once. I can't be transidentifying my body and splitting myself down the middle and stuff like that. It just ain't possible. Anyway, from Leonard Skinner, we're going to Led Zeppelin. And they... With what? The last studio album. In Through the Outdoor. We're looking at the song that starts it off called In the Evening. In the Evening is an okay little track, but then all of a sudden Jimmy Page just, just, just bursts into it like he's breaking through that outdoor. You know, he's going to the outhouse and he's, he needs to take a crap. And he's going to go there every way he can. Just listen to the guitar because it sounds like it's ripping through something. And I love it. This is the way the guitar solo starts. It's pretty badass. Now check this out because it just blows my mind. Listen to this. It's just, it's just bam. How did he do that? I don't know. <laughs> what, 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 what was that noise? It was his guitar, man, but whew. I'm just blown away. Now to finish off Guitar Solo City, we're gonna go to a, a more recent band. This ain't necessarily a solo, it's the beginning of a solo. It's what I call a dangerous moment in music. It's a very long, just, it's held forever, and it's a little ear, it's gonna grate your ears a little bit like cheese. But frankly, it's badass. And what it is, is Radiohead, uh, doing a song called Just Off the Album The Bands, which is turning into my favorite Radiohead album. I don't have too many, you know, things I love about Radiohead, but this song, boom, it just hits you. Now, just check out the guitar. It's going to get tiny. Remember when I told you about the tiny guitars? Yeah, this is going to get tiny. So you're going to hear them go from, from the verse into that, just that, he's going to hold that note until it dies, <laughs> believe you me. Now, now check this out because it's just, it's just fantastic. Oh, he's getting higher. know what the producer was thinking but he thought correctly and that's what I'm gonna tell you but here's where we're going from there T-Rex baby 
T-Rex was a band like no other band. And frankly, I think if the Beatles never existed, T-Rex might have very well been the most influential band in rock and roll history. That's a bold statement. I'm going to back it up with fact. Cosmic Dancer. That's right. Whew. We're talking off the album Electric Warrior, track two, perhaps. Yeah, I believe I'm correct, track two. And it's got goodness. But what gets me, it's almost this this LSD love song, baby. He's just cosmically dancing, but then he's going to go into this oh, oh, oh thing. But when them O's come into the song, it's like, oh, it's poetry, baby. I want to be tripping to this. And why am I not? Now, let's take a listen to this, just these O moments in Cosmic Dance. It's beautiful. You just want to be all hopped up on painkillers. Listen to Believe It. Just check it out. Ready? Here, here it comes. It's, it's just, it's gorgeous. I, I, I don't even know what to do without it. Here it comes, baby. And that's it. It's so tiny, it does it several times during the song, and it's beautiful every time. So from there, we're going to Frank Zappa. That's right, me and Frank Zappa. We had a lot of fun together. He wouldn't do drugs with me, though. But that's okay, because Frank is cool. Frank was the drug, you know, kind of like, you know, a lot of different people in the past. He just, he was, I don't know what he was high on. He was high on some. He was high on genius. He was high on his own genius. Now we're going to a, an album called One Size Fits All. And a little track called Andy. Napoleon Murphy Brock singing lead vocals, and it's beautiful. He does the first verse beautifully. And then you get this little solo breakdown bridge section that just travels and goes and is beautiful. But then it comes back with the vocals more powerful than before and it's talking about a thong. So you know Mojo's interested. Now listen to this because it's just sexy. It's one of my favorite moments in Frank Zappa history and one of the great moments in music as according to me, Mojo Johnson. That's right. Could have kept going with that one, but there was no reason because you get the idea. Napoleon Murphy Brock, way to go. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mojo, you're getting sexist. There's a lot of men on this list. Where the ladies? Now remember in the first episode, the first part, I had Miss Janice Joplin, one of my favorites of all time. And this, I'm going a little more contemporary with a lady named Fiona Apple. And believe me, she's my favorite kind of fruit to eat. Zing. Anyway, little track called Never Is A Promise. And it's off of her first album, I believe, her debut titled Dream. Uh, maybe track seven. That's what I like to think. You know, the old noggin ain't working like it did back in 1927. But hey, this is what I know. Now, what I want to get to is the first chorus she brings into it. Her voice just gets so beautiful. Now, Fiona has a good voice. It's good. It's not great. But this is just, just damn pretty. And it, and it hurts. You know, you're listening to it, it. You know, the hair on you, it's just going to stand. It's going to give you the chills in this region. You go, I think you're going to dig it. Now check it out. It's, it's beautiful. Never is a promise. Fiona Apple, you know, hit me with one more time, baby. <laughs> That's just got, that's gorgeous. I almost can't take it. I almost feel the tears starting right now. But not really, because I've heard the song several thousand times. It doesn't exactly have the same reaction it did, you know, the first two times. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, part two, Mojo Johnson presents great moments in music. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I'm gonna be coming back for part three. I can guarantee you that. Much love, baby. And you have yourself a fine evening.